So when in neutral, what happens is all three, in this case, because it's a five speed, so all three synchros, first, second, and the third, all three synchros are in center position, which means they're not locking any of the output gears to the output shaft. So if I were to hold the output shaft right here and turn the input shaft, the output shaft doesn't turn. So there's no power of moving anywhere. When putting the vehicle in first gear, you have your uh, forks. The shift forks are right here. So what happens is when you shift, this fork will push the collar backwards. And the collar will engage to the first gear here. So this is what happens. It gets pushed. It locks on to the first gear. So the power comes from the input shaft. It goes down to the counter shaft. And the smallest gear drives the biggest gear. And what that gives you is high torque, low speed. It's in a ratio of about 4.3 to 1 ratio when you're, if you have a five speed and uh, you're in first gear. So that will make it easy for the vehicle to take off from a stop. And now, once we are done with the first gear, the shift fork will pull the synchro collar from first gear. It'll come off the first gear and it will go on to the second gear. So now the collar is engaged to the second gear. Same thing happens. The power comes from input shaft, goes to the counter shaft, second gear goes up to the, uh, the collar and out to the output shaft. And this time, it'll give you a bit um, less torque, a bit more speed. Okay. Same thing happens. You would put the vehicle in neutral, and then there would be another fork that will go into third gear. So now it comes in. In third gear, power comes in. This gear engages on the counter shaft. This gear engages to the output gear, and the power goes to the output. And in third gear, the ratio is uh, about 1.5 to 1 ratio. Okay. And the last one is, uh, not the last one, sorry, and the fourth gear, the collar moves to the fourth gear. Gear Over here, the power is about one to one ratio. So the power goes straight out. It comes to the input shaft, and it goes out directly to the output shaft. Okay. So whatever the input shaft speed is, that is what the output shaft speed would be. Okay. And then we have our last gear. The last gear is the fifth gear. So when we put the vehicle in fifth gear, you can see the synchros attaching to the fifth gear here. So the power comes in through input, goes through the counter shaft fifth gear, going here to the output gear, going to your differential or depending on, or to the wheels, the powered wheels. And the fifth gear ratio is, it's a sort of an overdrive, which gives you 0.87 or 0.85 to 1 ratio. It gives you the maximum speed with uh, minimum torque. Okay. So in fifth gear, uh, the output shaft spins faster than the input shaft. When going into reverse, uh, the shifter lever, which is right here, the shifter lever moves the shifter fork right here. It moves the fork which moves the idler gear. I'll try to zoom it in because uh, people were having a hard time understanding this part last time. Uh, so which will move the idler reverse gear right here. It will move that gear. So I'll move it. Uh, hopefully you will be able to see that. Okay. So it will move that gear. And what that gear will do is the reverse idler gear that is, that's right there. It will bring these two gears, the, the gear on the counter shaft and the gear on the output shaft collar. It will engage those two. It, these two gears, the gear on the, the counter shaft and the gear on the uh, output shaft, they're never in contact with each other. They're never in directly contact with each other. Okay? It is the third gear, which actually, you can see that, they're never in contact. It is the reverse idler gear that brings all three gears in contact with each other. Okay, now to explain the working of reverse gear. So if we have the vehicle in reverse gear and we turn the input shaft, which is right here, if we turn the input shaft counterclockwise, so it's going down this way, so if it's turned counterclockwise, that's this gear, which is same as 
the input shaft here, it will spin the counter shaft, that's why it's called a counter shaft, it will spin the counter shaft clockwise. So this shaft is turning clockwise now. And what that does is, because this gear is engaged with the reverse idler gear, it will make the reverse idler gear turn counterclockwise. And the last thing, the output gear, which is right here, it's attached to the output shaft, it will turn the output shaft going clockwise. So in this situation, when we are in reverse, if I'm turning the out, uh, input shaft counterclockwise, it will turn the output shaft clockwise, giving you the reverse of what the engine or what the shaft is turning. To explain it on a paper, so here is our input shaft. That is right here. So if the input shaft is turning counterclockwise, it will turn the counter shaft, which is right here, it will turn the counter shaft going clockwise, which will turn the, the reverse idler gear, which is the gear way at the back. The gear, let me zoom in again. The gear that you see at the back, you see the movement of the gear? That gear will turn counterclockwise, going the opposite. And the last thing is, that gear will send the power to the output reverse gear, which is right here. It will send the power to that going clockwise. So input shaft, counterclock, output shaft, 